Okay, everybody, welcome to Stone Age Fuel Barbell Club Technique Tips. And in the first episode, we went over pulling too fast. Second episode, we went over going around the knees. Third episode, today, we're going to go over dropping too fast in the jerk. So the, the third most common thing we see that's a big problem in lifters, especially in the jerk, and getting better at the jerk, is that they like to drop so fast in this part that as they come up, they lose their core and their knees drive forward, and then they shoot forward, they press it out, and then all kinds of bad things happen. So what we wanna do is we wanna learn to maintain midline stability in the jerk, and we wanna learn to control that drop, because like we've said before, slow is smooth, and smooth is fast, especially when you're learning these things. Yeah, if you don't, everything you've done comes back to not only good position, but also bar connection, uh, and if you're trying to overpower the bar rather than feeling yourself through the lift, uh, you're just not going to have control. Uh, the barbell is something that's easy to get away from you, uh, especially when you've got load on it. And when you're in the overhead during something like a snatch or a jerk, uh, it's not something where you can just kind of chase it around uh, safely, uh, especially when you're going for your max lifts. Exactly. So when you're thinking about the jerk, I know it's, it's tempting to want to go really fast and drive out because common knowledge, as you would think, which shouldn't be so common, is that if you go fast, you're gonna be able to get it up fast. But if you do that, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna lose everything as you come up because the bars are designed to flex. And when the flex happens, if you go too fast and that flex hits you when you're down here, it crushes you and it doesn't allow you to drive up in the right position. So we need to control the bar and control that flex. And if we can learn to control both those things, we're gonna have a good upright, straight up and down jerk where we're gonna be able to drive in a good position. So let's. Let's show them what a poor jerk looks like with the drive forward, Dale. I'm going to scroll over here so Dale doesn't kill me with the barbell. So basically what he's going to do is he's going to get in position, but as he dips down, he's going to dip really fast, and you're going to watch his core, and you're going to watch his knees, and everything's going to shoot forward. Let's do it. See, that's a light load for Dale, but because he went so fast, you watched the bar actually rise, crash on him, then he had to recover, try to drive out, and catch it. And as he caught it, it was forward, so he had to situate himself in the beginning. Let's do another four one, Dale. See, and on that one, he dipped so fast that he almost shot himself backwards. So what we're seeing here is the failure to control the movement of the barbell. And what we want to do is build the control in that movement by focusing on a slower dip. So let's see, let's see a good one, Dale. So that was a solid position. What happened was here, he controlled it. He didn't let his chest dip down at all because he had the control because he was in a good phase of the movement and going at a good speed. Then as he drove out, he was able to maintain his center mass, his knees didn't shoot forward, and he was able to drive straight up and catch. Because what happens, like we talked about in the previous videos, is the bar and your body want to maintain center mass. And if you shoot that bar forward or your body forward, the entire center of mass is going to have to shoot forward in order to compensate for it and keep your body in the most efficient position possible. Yeah, you just take yourself out of a position where by dropping fast, you're, let, you're more likely to lose your core. And therefore, talking about the knees shooting forward, we're pressing out of the balls of our feet or out of our toes rather than back into our midfoot. where We've got that good stable position, able to properly utilize stretch reflex from our hip flexors and from our glutes to get that fast drive out, right? So that fast drive doesn't come from uh, a fast drive on the way down. That's just gonna make it again so that bar crashes into you. Your core has to re-stabilize, right? As you're trying to ride it down uh, versus if you you take it slow controlled, you keep yourself extended, you're gonna be able to get that stretch reflex and properly drive uh, Super Mario style out of your jerk. Exactly. So if you want to be able to drive Super Mario style out of your jerk and get the little coin block above your head in a perfectly straight line, things you need to do are, like Dale was saying, we need to maintain center mass or our weight in the center of our foot or maybe towards the rear when we're training beginners, we teach them heels mm -hmm. because we want to overemphasize the cue to allow them to learn to feel the movement. As we get better at it and more technical at the movement, we're going to focus on the center of our foot as we dip. The next thing we focus on is keeping our knees uh, straight in a straight line. We don't need to drive them out really hard or let them come in. And then all we're going to do is drive out is keep our butt back, drive straight up. And during that phase of the motion, your elbows should just be in the same position the entire time with your chest up. 
And now how do we train the strength in that movement? We do back squats, we do front squats. Then as we get better at the movements and more advanced in our technique, we start doing jerk drives and jerk dips. And if you're, in, if you're in a position where you're good at this, but you feel like you're really pressy and you're doing this, you can just do every jerk as a primer. So your primer is one, two, and then the third one you do the actual jerk. So prime the movement with good motor, motor patterns. Something I, that uh, a lot of newer athletes too, you're gonna find, you wanna work with how you're cueing pressing under the bar. Cause everyone wants to just drive it up. Uh, a lot of people come from different backgrounds, especially powerlifting coming into this sport or high school football, whatever it is. And a lot of people know only how to press up or to drive up rather than how to press under the bar. So you gotta find a, thing, a, a way that works with your athletes and your clients in the interest of uh, teaching them to press under, drive up with the hips and press themselves down under the bar uh, with the shoulders. Exactly, so that's the jerk. Let's give them one more good jerk from a side angle so people right. can actually see it from a good spot. Oh, check out my solid clean. So now think about everything we talked about. If you need to rewind the video, uh, listen to what we talked about again, and then watch Dale's movement patterns. Look at his chest, see that it's upright. Look at his butt, that it stays back. Watch his feet, notice that they stay centered or to the rear of his foot. Let's see it. All right, let's do three. And one more. Easy day. Perfect. So that's the jerk. If you have problems, this is probably single-handedly the biggest problem we see in the jerk. And rather than press your bar forward and continue to try to press up, take a step back, work on this, and you'll see a lot of results. We just had, RJ has a big problem with this a lot of the time, and he just PR'd by like nine kilos because we learned to control that position. So no matter how good you are at this movement, I can guarantee you this is probably a, a problem if you're missing jerks out front or you're pressing them out. I concur. So that's the end of the video. Let's say thank you to our, our tra USAW training site gentlemen. They've been going back and forth the whole video. They're pretty, they're pretty dedicated. Give them a round of applause. All right, guys, if you have questions about what we talked about today or you want us to talk about something else in the future you're struggling with, just post them in the comments or shoot us an email, info at stonehjewels.com. See you guys later.